Hi, I'm Kennedy Jensen. Welcome to the Vision High School Sports Beat. The Vision High School Sports Beat is brought to you by the nine locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships from Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai, Ford, Kia, and Nissan, with locations in Webster, Henrietta, Greece, Penfield, Fairport, and Canandaigua. Online at visionauto.com. Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us at the Vision Automotive Group High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Tucker. Every week at this time, we take a comprehensive look at sports in Section 5 in Monroe County, and we begin with our honor roll of high school teams. At number three, we had the Wilson baseball team in the same slot last week when the Wildcats were 9-0, now they're 12-0. Owen Gabby was the winning pitcher in the first game of a doubleheader sweep with Soda. Owen also scored five runs in that game. Number two, HFL Girls Lacrosse. The Cougars are 9-2, the last of those wins coming against previously unbeaten Penfield. Brittany Chamberlain scored five goals, Megan Bro had five assists. And at number one, explain this. The Rush Henrietta baseball team is 5-7, but the Comets have handed 11-2 Victor both of its losses this year. Brian Sado went 3-3 three three with three RBI in that game. Which brings us to Locust Hill Country Club and the next big thing. We are rarely content with what we have. It's all about what's next. The next win, the next title, the next big thing. Meet Will Thompson of Pittsburgh, the latest in a line of great golfers being produced in that town. What separates Will from all the other top golfers in the section, he's a seventh grader. How do you coach a 12-year-old? I mean, do you have to remind yourself, this kid is like so young that maybe you have to handle him a little different? Um, yeah, you know, a lot of it's not you know, about his golf swing at all. It's about, you know, uh, coming back from, you know, a bad hole or coming back from a bad round or whatever and just uh, mentally getting him prepared for some bigger tournaments down the road. That road has already taken Thompson places. He plays on the PGA's junior circuit and has competed at Pinehurst in North Carolina. California and has been overseas. But this is his first year as a varsity golfer on the Pittsburgh Menden High School team. In just his third match, he shot a 73 to share medalist honors at Locust Hill. It's a really nice course. It's really tight, so it was kind of tough to hit the driver straight, but uh, I, I putted really well and got the job done today. So Yeah, I mean, 73 is a great score, right? Yeah, I played pretty well. I, I Like I said, I didn't hit many greens, but my short game was really good out there. Thompson's approach to the game helps separate him. He plays year-round, he has a personal coach, and expectations of himself that make Will his own worst critic. I think just with experience, everything will come, but a mental game is definitely a big part of it, and just trying to get through everything, grinding every shot out. You're a little tough on yourself out there sometimes, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I get a little frustrated sometimes. I gotta work on that a little bit, but I kinda, I expect a little too much for myself sometimes, and I gotta, ease up a little bit. When you know you got a good golfer on your hands, it's the, the people that can handle adversity and the people that are bouncing back from bad rounds or bad shots that you know you can't tell whether they're even par or four under par or five over par. You help accelerate that process as a, as a good coach? Uh, you can. You, it's, they got to be willing to listen a little bit. They got to be willing to accept where they're at in the process, um, you know, how good they are and where they're going to go. And um, you know, it's it's all what, what they want to do with themselves and what their demeanor is on the golf course. It has been said at this point of his development that Thompson is ahead of Gavin Hall, the last big thing at Menden, who now plays at the University of Texas. So he is special. Do you ever find yourself wishing you could just be like a normal kid? I mean, sometimes, but I'm kind of glad I, like, I have a talent in something and so I'm not just sitting around on the couch all day or something like that. But. I don't know, it's, always, it's fun out here, so I'm glad I get to play. 
Sectionals later this week, coming up on this weekend, will pit Thompson against teammate Gunnar Doyle and Pittsford Sutherland's Jack Ginnany. If Will wins, it could be a long reign. The Glavins from Hilton when we return. Hi, I'm Gunnar Blaze, and you're watching the Vision High School Sports Beat. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. Time now for our honor roll of high school athletes. Top three at number three, Erin Kuykendall of Spencerport. She had five goals and five assists in a girls lacrosse win of against Chai Lai. Erin is a seventh grader. And number two, some unbelievable numbers from the Penfield softball team in a win over RH. Leah Crockett and Nicole Sheffer combined to go eight for ten and hit five home runs. And at number one, Megan Maloney of Victor, the girls lacrosse team, in three wins, including one over nationally ranked and previously unbeaten Brighton, Megan scored 11 goals. Blue Devils are 11 and 1. Which brings us to Hilton and one of the real highlight events of the local track and field season. <laughs> as far as local track and field meets go, the Hilton Cadet Classic has carved itself out a real niche. The Saturday showcase is a primetime event. The pole vault pits constructed front and center on the field immediately in front of the grandstand. And then there's the Glavin. Glavin is the premier in-season long-distance event in Section 5. Named in honor of the former McQuaid and Rutgers University distance star Peter Glavin, who's also the founder of the Genesee Valley Harrier Running Club. Glavin died four years ago at the age of 48. This year, his son Donovan, a sophomore at McQuaid, ran in his first Glavin. What was the experience of running this race like for you? Uh, it was very emotional. Like when I was when they were about to call my name, I like almost started crying. It was just so surreal, just racing in a race named after you or your dad. The boys run 3,200 meters, and the 2014 race attracted a field of 39 participants. This was supposed to be a showcase for the great Mickey Burke of Rush Henrietta. The field remained tightly packed throughout most of the race with Burke in the lead. But with the event about half over, Burke pulled out, retiring to the infield with a tweaked groin, the result of a week old injury. That left the Rondequoit's Josh Durland in the lead. Well, look, you were, you were closest to Mickey when he dropped out. What was going through your mind? Um, I don't know. It kind of threw me off a little bit, but I know he's been injured, so I just kind of, you know, I was, wasn't quite sure what was going on for a minute, and then just figured keep going, and I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I it's like, know. oh, my goodness, at that point, I could win this thing, right? Yeah, actually. You know, I was kind of bummed I had to fight the win and everything by myself, but, you know, once, once I realized I could win, it, that was a nice motivation. The Glavin was claimed by Corning senior John McCarthy, who pulled away with a great late kick. Durland, the fifth seed, finished second. In the middle of the pack, Donovan Glavin tied his personal best at the distance in 10-10. Dad would have been proud. I just like compare my times to him like when he was like younger, like my age and stuff, so that's about it. How are you doing with that comparison so far? Um, I feel like I'm ahead of him. Like, I know last year I was ahead of him. I just haven't really checked this year that much. I usually wait till like the end of the year, but I know I definitely beat him like in cross country for the McQuaid invite, so that's good. Well, Jason, he had a great career, so that means you're going to have a great career. That's what I hope. <laughs> <laughs> the girls' race saw Penfield's Katie Lembo return to form after being beaten by Rush Henrietta's Alex Cooper at the His and Her the week before. Last week, I was just like, oh, I'll run at the invite because it's like my team's, like my school's invite. Because like I just got in like the day before and like this week I'm like, okay, now like it's my chance to like win it. Like I'm a senior, so. Lembo pulled away from another giant field, 33 runs, and appeared poised for a championship finish. Katie held a big lead into the final lap of the 3,000 meters when Corning freshman Jessica Lawson kicked it into high gear for the stretch run. You didn't know she was closing on you at the end there, did you? No, I didn't. I couldn't hear anything over the speakers and people cheering and everything, so I just 
trying to kick it in as hard as I could. When you realize how close it was, what, like how surprised were you? I was, I was surprised. I was like, oh, I don't even know if I won. Like, I think she might have leaned like farther than me. Lembo beat Lawson by less than a fifth of a second. Uh, winning the Glavin, something special? Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, I've been running it since um, I was like really young in like eighth grade or ninth grade, and I, I've come really close to winning it, and winning it this year was special. Close race, our winner Katie Lembo from Pittsfield with a time of 9.57.83. Kim Burnson and our Making the Grade nominee when we return. Hi, I'm Brayton Brescia, and you're watching the Vision High School Sports Beat. Welcome back to the Vision Automotive High School Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. Making the Grade is brought to you by the nine locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships, proud to be Rochester's number one selling automotive group. This week, we head out to Fairport, where Jamie Wolmering is making the grade. In the category of well-rounded students, Jamie stands out amongst his peers. As a junior and two-sport varsity athlete at Fairport High School, Jamie maintains a high honor roll status and is enrolled in multiple AP courses. He dabbled in many different sports throughout the years, including some football, cross country, and baseball, before finding his niche. This year, he was a starter and outside hitter for Fairport's varsity volleyball team, helping lead the team to a state title. Jamie earned first team all-county and all-greater Rochester status in volleyball, second team all-county in basketball, and was also named Scholar Athlete by the New York State Public High School Athletic Association. When he's not competing for a junior national championship with his travel volleyball team, you can find Jamie volunteering at the Fairport Music Festival during the summer, as well as giving his time to others during Fairport's Brotherhood and Sisterhood Week. He is currently being recruited by colleges for both volleyball and basketball, but has yet to decide on what direction he'll take. Nominated for his outstanding work in the gym as well as in the classroom, this week Jamie Wolmering is making the grade. If you have an idea for a Making the Grade segment, a team or individuals making contributions off the playing field, you can contact us at info at classywolf.com. I'm Kim Burnson and here's Bill with a look at our Section 5 calendar. We start the week off with some golf. Many of the best players together with Pittsford Menden, Pittsford Sutherland and McQuaid taking on Oak Hill West. How do you beat that? It's Monday at 3 o'clock. Oak Hill also hosts the Tournament of Champions a week from Monday. Lacrosse takes over Tuesday. We have a girls game, 10-2 HFL at 12-1 Victor. The Blue Devils fresh off that big win over Brighton. Then Tuesday night, Penfield challenges unbeaten Pittsburgh in a boys match at Nazareth at 7 o'clock. East meets West in baseball with Fairport playing at Hilton Thursday at 4.30. Track and field on Saturday, tis the season. The Monroe County Championships take place at Rush Henrietta. Just some of the Section 5 sporting events that you should consider attending this week. Up next, it's Mercy of Brockport, the slugger and the ace. It's our Selena Wynn Barnes All Sports High School Game of the Week. Hi, I'm Anae Flanagan, and you're watching the Visions High School Sports Beat. The Vision High School Sports Beat is brought to you by Selena Wynn Barnes. Car accident? Don't wait. Call 8 888 8888. Call Selena Wynn Barnes today. Welcome back to the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. This portion of our Sports Beat brought to you by Selena and Barnes, your personal injury attorneys. It was a thoroughly irresistible matchup. Great teams, compelling athletes. Mercy at Brockport Softball. It's our Selena and Barnes All Sports High School Game of the Week. They shared all greater Rochester Player of the Year honors a year ago two Division I college-bound softball superstars, senior Aiden Falk of Mercy, zeroing in on the state home run record against Brockport junior Julia DiMartino, having surrendered a single earned run in five starts so far, the last three of which were no hitters. The slugger and the ace, playing for two defending Section 5 champions. How did this come about? I mean, do you guys just get together and decide this is a game that ought to be played? At the uh, at the beginning of the season, uh, I reached out to them and said, hey, that we would like to get a game in, and he changed the schedule around uh, to accommodate us, and here we are. This was the first time Falk and DiMartino would face each other in a real game. 
it's two quality kids going at it. They're two great players. Um, you know, our philosophy is is we're going to go after everybody. So, um, you know, unless the situation calls for late in the game, you know, we're going to pitch to everybody. Come up, May. Uh, you know, we're using this as a good litmus test for us. Uh, you know, it's going to make us better for down the road. And you know, you always want to face kids that, that have the capability and the ability that she does. Everybody wins here today, don't they? Absolutely. It's a great game for softball. It's going to be. We're actually outside. It's a good day. We we got to play. So yeah, I think so. Everybody, hopefully, everybody's in for a treat. A real good game today. Buck battle against DiMartino for the first time in the top of the first inning. In the seven pitch at bat, Buck fouled off three straight before striking out. Kind of got what I was expecting. A lot better rise ball than she had last year, which threw me off a lot. Um, good movement, really good movement, good speed, just like a solid all around pitcher. And personally, I swung at the rise ball when I shouldn't have swung at the rise ball. So that kind of what's got me. But you know, with a pitcher like that, you can't be, be disappointed because of how skillful and she places her spots perfectly. So. I mean, I would be upset about it, but because she's such a good pitcher, it's all right. <laughs> the bottom of the inning, Brockport threatened to almost immediately blow the game open. A walk, a stolen base, and a bunt single by Serena Roos, who took second in the confusion, had runners at second and third with one out. Roos had three hits. We really work to like sacrifice ourselves and make opportunities for the next player up to move us around. So. At first, we saw her on third, so they were just, we were trying to make an opportunity for everyone to like move us around. Mercy pitcher Megan Ferrioli worked out of that jam by getting DiMartino to fly out and Shannon Allen to ground out. Round two for the Falk versus DiMartino match occurred with Aiden leading off the fourth inning. Five pitches, Julia slipped a call third strike past Aiden. I um, got the pitch call, and I tried to hit my spot, but um, I tried to jam her inside, like I said, because I know, like, um, I kind of have an idea of where she can hit it, so I tried to do my best to um, try to keep it away. The game itself remained scoreless to the seventh and final regulation inning. DiMartino was working on a one-hitter with 14 strikeouts. She would get 17. Leading off the inning, Mercy's Michaela Schler made contact. Good contact. The sophomore infielder had a triple. It was just hard work that I've been doing for the season, and my teammates, they are the most to blame for all of it because they've been pushing me so hard. And if you're going to blame anyone, blame them. <laughs> all right, so look, you run around the bases, you're going towards third base, you realize, man, that was big. What was that like? <laughs> um, I was so excited. and. Just knowing that I could do that for my team, I was so proud of myself. Falk was the next batter. DiMartino pitched a rounder for a four-pitch walk. With Schler still at third, Falk took first, never broke stride, and continued towards second. The double steal was on. Michaela just managed to get under the tag at the plate. I had a feeling she was going to take a lead and go to second, so I wanted to fake her out. and. Um, get the runner at third, but I don't know, I guess whatever happens, happens. I was scared. I was so freaked out. Um, I saw her going and Julia faked it and she got me. And so I was just praying and hoping to God <laughs> that I was safe at home. Right, so, so the play wasn't, a, it wasn't an advance, it just kind of developed. It just kind of happened. Brockport rallied in the bottom of the seventh, putting the tying and go-ahead runners in scoring position with one out. But Mercy's pitcher, Megan Ferrioli, struck out the last two batters he faced to preserve the one nothing win. Going into the game, were you thinking, I want to show them that I can pitch too? I was thinking that, yes, but again, I my defense is just so good that it's like, I don't have to, you know, blow balls by people because I can count on them. So, but I did want to show my stuff, yeah. It's huge, it's huge, and it's exactly what we needed just to help us keep moving on with the season and all that kind of stuff because we came back from uh, tougher losses in um, Ohio. So it's nice to know that like we still fighting us and it's it's a really good game, especially playing such a good team. It's just it's like a great it's a great feeling to know that we got it in us too. We'd like to thank our Sports Beat sponsorship partners, Ross Salino and Stephen Barnes, your personal injury attorneys, and the nine dealerships of the Vision Automotive Group. They make the Sports Beat possible. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.